Hello everyone, my name is Kist, and today we're talking about Super Elevation. Before we begin, it turns out not so many of you are subscribed. This video took a little while to make and it'd be greatly appreciated if you subscribed and hit that notification bell. It's free and you can always take it back later. In this video, we are going to be talking about a few things regarding super elevation first, and if it's not for you, here are the chapters for this video so you can skip to the parts that suit you best. Now, what is super elevation? Super elevation is the process of raising one side of a curve, or banking the curve. We do this to allow for faster speeds and simply put a smoother ride. You may notice this when you're driving in your local area, or if you ride trains more often, you might notice this with a train as well. You can't do this with a boat, well, because you can't turn water like that, and you wouldn't do this with a plane because planes will just roll themselves. Another good way to think about it is NASCAR or some form of raceway. These actually have really big banks and they're really clear to see. Another word for this is called cant or camber. It's more European, but it means the same thing as banking. We're just tilting it to one side or the other. Now, what is the actual point of this? Why do we want super elevation? Again, the point is we have a smoother ride and we can go for faster speeds. That's really the two main things. And why is that important? Well, we're really worrying about the transfer of weight. We have trucks and other big vehicles that we have to worry about. We're gonna focus on the rail aspect today and just why it's important with rails and trains themselves. When it comes to trains as just actual vehicle, the biggest problem with them is the amount of weight they need to move. Why are trains slow to move? Why are trains slow to stop? And why do I have to be care so much about trains and how they act? It's all about the force applied. Focusing on trains in America, trains here can run for miles long. You might see the same thing in Australia with iron ore trains, but trains here can run for miles. So it's very important that we have to worry about the weight and how they're transferring. We want super elevation to help bank the train one way and just make it as smooth as possible. We don't need any trains toppling or any derails happening. Okay, so now that we know what super elevation is and how it can affect us, the next thing we have to ask is, what about railroads online? Is it even a thing in railroads online? Does it even matter? What like what's going on with railroads online and super elevation? Well, in the game engine, we currently can't place a super elevated spline. The spline will just curve naturally on a flat ground, nothing else extra. The result in this is we actually have interesting physics mechanics happening on the rails. There isn't as much to hold the engine in place anymore. So unfortunately, you are more prone to have derails just using a flat curve like this. This is where super elevation helps. Now, why isn't it in rails online? Why isn't it already calculated? Well, simply put, it's hard. It is a very hard thing to code and to get right. How do you know which angle to turn to? How steep? How shallow? Does it apply to every curve? Is it constant? What happens if it's on a grade? There's so many questions, so many variables, and it's really, really hard to get precise and to get right. This said, I have now figured out a way to put super elevation into railroads online. So let's talk about it. Is it actually worth it or is it not? To answer this question, I decided to run a series of tests, three to be exact, and what I was testing for was the rate of decay throughout the curve. Now why does this matter? Well, one of the things with super elevation is that we can sustain higher speeds, so what I need the test for is how fast we lost speed, or if we lost speed at all, compared to a normal curve. The three tests you're going to see is from a 120 meter curve, a 50 meter curve, and 30 meter curve. I decided to run over each curve three times just to make sure what I am telling you is accurate and true. I did tilt them to different angles and I'll explain a little bit more during each test, but that's what we're going to be testing with. A disclaimer here is I have not tested this on every single curve value, nor have I tested this on a grade just yet. But without further ado, let's just jump into the first footage and talk about it. Okay, what was going on? 
On the left side of the screen, we had a rail super elevated at three degrees, and on the right side, we just had a normal flat curve. And what was going on here? What does the actual footage tell us? Well, if you notice under the curve, there's little pieces of stone wall, and that marked the beginning and the end of the curve. Now, I would like to run the footage back one more time, and let's actually put a timer up there. Maybe one was faster. Did they stay the same? Let's just find out. Okay, rather interesting. It seems like both the engines have reached the same point at the exact same time. I'm looking at their third wheel, and you can see that they were just at the end of the stone wall right there. To the me, this tells me that they are equal. There is no difference between the two. We can reconfirm this by looking at the road's extended speed. Let's go check it out. Just like before, we have a super elevated curve on the left and a normal curve on the right. And we're going to focus on this value right here, current speed, and this is in miles per hour. Let's watch. Right here is where I turn the throttles off, and if you notice real quickly, the one on the left is 0.1 miles per hour ahead. As we watch through the curve, you might notice it stays a 0.1 difference the entire time. Let's double check. Right here, I begin to turn the throttles back on, and you should have noticed that, again, it stayed a 0.1 difference the entire time. There is no big gain on either side. This, again, retells me that they both decay at the same rate, they travel at the same speed. Okay, perhaps not what we want to hear for the first test, but we still have two more. Let's go check them out. Okie doke, already a lot different compared to test 1. On the left side of the screen we have our super elevated curve, but this time at 4 degrees. And on the right side is just a normal 50 meter degree curve. I think just like before though, what we should do is put a timer on the screen and see if there's actually any difference to capture. Let's do it real quickly. Whoa, 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 what is going on here? The elevated curve is faster than the normal curve? Yeah, apparently so, just ever so slightly faster on elevated track. And honestly, when I first saw this, I had to run this a bunch of times. I actually ran this one six times, and I decided to record the values. And, oh man, it blew my mind. But the next question is, how fast? Is it really fast? Is it ever so slightly faster? Is it just barely the same? Let's go over to Extended and find that out. Okay, just like before, I turn off the throttles right here at the start of the curve, and again, we have a slight discrepancy of 0.1 miles per hour. We will keep that in mind, and we'll take it off the grand total, but let's watch the speeds very closely, and I think you'll find something interesting happen. Right here, I decided to turn the throttles back on for both the engines, but as we watch the replay one more time, you might notice the right screen actually loses speed a lot faster. The left rail does not. Why does this matter? Well, this is telling me the effects of super elevation. It turns out the super elevated track is causing us to stay faster, keeping us at a higher speed, while the right rail does not. However, you notice it's only by 0.2 miles per hour at best. Probably not the most beneficial as we were hoping, but I think we can start to see a trend form. As the tighter the curve becomes, I think we can see the bigger increase in the super elevation benefits. Let's go check it out on 30 meters. Right off the bat, you guys might notice something very different compared to the last few tests. Where is the second point of view? Where's the flat version of the 30 meter curve? 
Unfortunately, whenever I tried running a train over it, it did not make it through. It kept rolling off the tracks. Yeah, it didn't go very well. Regardless of that, I still got some valuable information from this curve specifically. I also tried it at 3 degrees and 4 degrees, but the curve you're seeing now is actually tilted at 5 degrees. What happened was, with a 3 degree tilt, I fell off the track still like a normal curve. At 4 degrees, I stayed on and then at other times I would roll off the tracks. At 5 degrees, I consistently stayed on the tracks, even going full speed at 30 miles per hour and not cutting off the throttle. With this all said, I don't think I'm going to show the road's extended point of view. I did record both tests and my attempts, but I tried for two hours to see if the train can go through a flat 30 meter curve at a decently high speed. It could not. Sure, you can do it at slower speeds and even with a different engine, but for this case, I could not get it to safely go through the curve. With this said, there are some factors you need to be careful of when doing this sort of thing. I think going at high speeds through a 30 meter curve is only possible through super elevation. However, two things you need to keep in mind is the speed and the size of your train. You might have seen in that short little clip that one of the cars was wiggling off the tracks and actually almost rolled off the track completely. I had problems with the hopper too and it rolled off the curve each time. So do be careful with what type of cars you're using and how long the train is in this case. A little bit different compared to the other two, we actually have a sort of non-conclusive test because there's still another factor we haven't considered yet but it was too hard to actually succeed with. On a 30 meter curve, super elevation is needed to run at higher speeds. After running these tests and trying different curves and different angles, I have a few things I have found. A disclaimer though is there are some other things you have not seen. I did try a few more curves and I did try a few more angles for the ones you did see. And I didn't bother showing them for a few reasons being, one, it would be a rather long video if I showed you every single thing I have done, and two, it proved to be redundant in the long run for the video's sake. Regardless, again, what are the results? Well, if you're building a curve bigger than 100 meters, really more specifically bigger than 120 meters, super elevation is null and void. The curve is too wide to actually gain any benefit. For curves under 100, I think you can get some slight benefits the closer you get down to 30 meters. And it proves really beneficial at 30 meters itself, especially running at higher speeds. The other thing to note is when you run through each of these curves, you can make it consistently with power. We did these tests just by coasting and just simply no throttle, but I did try running these curves full throttle with the 280 and what happened was I had no loss of speed, it just powered through them all easily. So unfortunately super elevation seems to prove beneficial when it comes to coasting, not actually running an engine with power. Near the start of the video I asked a question, is super elevation actually worth it? And it was because of these tests I actually have an answer. No with exception. And what do I mean? I think if we're going purely for performance and the actual game aspect, I don't think super elevation is actually worth it. You may have seen from the test that the super elevated curve had a lot of pieces. For the 50 meter curve, it was made out of 30 pieces. The 30 meter curve was made out of 42 pieces. And that is a lot. The game calculates something called spline count because if you use the splines as entities. And so the more pieces we have for a curve or a piece of track, the more performance heavy. Not to mention the rendering has to do for all the splines in one area. It does not actually give any good game benefit. However, what is the exception? If you're anything like me, I love designing things. I love the design aesthetic and just how things look. If you really wanted to go for that aspect and just have your world look really cool and have some cool moments, I think Super Elevation's actually worth it. I actually like Super Elevation and how it makes the trains roll and how everything is going with it. And I think it's a really cool tool to use. Now, with this all said, time for the real big event. 
how do I actually build Super Elevation? Now that we're back into a fresh rose online world, one thing we can actually talk about is how Super Elevation is possible. In the current state of the game, Super Elevation is only possible through the tool Railroad Studio. You can activate it through your browser, and this is truly what makes Super Elevation possible. There are going to be more things as we go along to talk about, especially when it comes to the Rose Studio side. I have a lot of cool things to show you guys. When it comes to the construction side, it doesn't necessarily matter which rail you pick. For this case, I'm going to use 3 foot rail 1. Now if you look on the right, we have a bunch of values here for us to use. We're going to be looking here at the alignment 0 degrees. And what does this mean? The actual alignment is where you're pointing in the world on a 360 degree scale. You can see as I rotate, the spline is turning around this on a 360 degree, it's spinning in a circle. For our purposes, we want to go to alignment zero. We want to be facing directly west. The other important thing is you want to make sure your spline is on the grid. Now, what do I mean? Well, if I change the grid size, currently it's at a one. If I change it to 10, you can see that the spline is actually moving at bigger chunks. If I change it to 50, now it's moving at bigger distances, especially 100, it's moving at a really big distance. And what is this? The grid is set to centimeters. So this is moving by one centimeter, 10 centimeters, 50 centimeters, and 100 centimeters, or one full meter. For our purposes, we're going to be building on one centimeter intervals, as this will be the nicest for building. The other thing that's rather important is where we're doing this. I wouldn't try to do super elevation on an existing world. I'll explain why when we actually get to the road studio side of it, but it's going to make it harder for you to keep track of which piece you're building from. But again, we're picking from 3 foot rail 1 right here, and this is where we're going to start building. I'm on alignment 0, and I think I'm going to go right over here to actually build. You can do this from alignment 90, it doesn't really matter which angle you do, as long as it's on a pure grid. I think I'm going to go 110 meters, and this is it. I'm actually going to go ahead and save the game. Okay, the game is saved, and the next thing we actually want to do is we want to go to Railroad Studio and load this world in first. And here we are in Railroad Studio. This is a third party tool map editor. If I actually load in one of my saves, we can see a lot of things. So let's do that real quickly. Okay, awesome. And if you're curious in how I actually found the save and loaded it up, I actually have a separate tutorial all dedicated to Railroad Studio and how it works. You should go check it out. So what are we actually looking at here? Well, you're looking at the 50 meter curve test I actually did a few minutes ago. And if I zoom in here, you can see that there's a lot of tiny pieces between this. This is actually a 40 piece curve. And what we're actually going to be looking and focusing on today is this thing here, spline tracks. Going over to the page, we have a lot going on, a lot of values. You might think, oh, we're going to use the ID column over here to find out which spine we're doing. Maybe it builds it in ascending order or the most recent created. However, this is not necessarily the case. It is a random assignment. There is some order to it, but it's a slightly random assignment to the spines themselves. What we're actually going to be focusing on is the rail type over here. And what does this mean? What is the value? If I go to the next page, what is happening here? Thankfully, we can actually use this for our rail assortment over the ID number over here. And why? Well, Rivet Studio actually classifies each spline based on their height. If I had a stone wall or a bridge, it would actually be classified higher versus the regular groundwork. And this goes ascending down. This is rail 3, our height 10. Rail 2 is height 5. And if I go to the next page, rail 1 is height 1. So this has become really important for us and we're going to use this to actually build the curve. If I load up our current save, you can see we have our only piece, we only have that straight segment. What I want to do today is I just want to curve it right so it can go north towards the sawmill. No particular reason, but I think this will be a nice curve to do. I think we're going to build a 100 meter radius curve. I think we can tilt it at 3, maybe 4 degrees just to give it some really cool bank. What's actually going to allow you to cause super elevation is the rotation tool here. If I go ahead and click on this piece right here, you can see this value. This is the one we're actually concerned about. We don't really care about these two, they're not as important. What Yaw is telling us is simply where the track is pointing in the world. Is it pointing on alignment 1 through 360, just like how we were spinning the spline earlier? The roll is the actual elevation, the actual tilt. And you can see for this one, I did 0.25 increments. This allows for some really smooth transitioning. If we looked on my 30 meter test, you might see I actually changed the value to 0.3 increments instead, just trying to see if it would still work at a slightly bigger interval. 
The problem is creating the transition from flat to angled track. Unfortunately, we don't have a way to create a really nice smooth ramp and a nice transition to it, so we have to create a really, 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 really tiny staircase. My recommendation is to do 0.25 or 0.3 increments at a time, and you want to make sure the spline itself is actually relatively short. So let's go back into Roads Online and see what we can actually create. Once back in the save, now we have a lot of things to keep in mind. We want to use 3 foot rail 3 first, and we actually want to build in shorter segments. Like I said, we're going to build a 100 meter curve, and again, I want to build in shorter segments. So I'm actually going to do 2.5 for this first bit, and another 2.5. Now why am I doing this? Well, we still have a problem with a straight piece going into a curve, and I want to make sure that we have a smooth transition into the curve. So now I can go a little bit bigger. I'm going to do three meter segments. Now it doesn't necessarily matter how many pieces we're actually doing at first at this. I think I'm going to try to keep it down to maybe five to 10 at a time. So let's see, I got one, five segments already. This would be a good thing to switch to. So now I'm going to go to three foot rail two. Let's do it again. We're doing three meter segments. We already have a decent amount done. But now we have to kind of think about something. We're almost through a third of the curve and I actually want to make sure I'm going to be tilting the correct amount. So I need to count the angle. This is our flat ground and I'm actually going to increase it by 0 0.3 because it's a little bit quicker. So we have 0, 0 0.3, 3. So already I'm at 3 degrees tilted. So I can probably save and actually go 0 0.25. I think I'm going to do that instead to create a smoother transition. 2, 2.25, 2.5. Okay, next thing you wanna do is we want you wanna save the game. And once you do that, let's go back to Road Studio. Once here, you wanna load up your save. As you can see here, we have the start of our curve and all the little pieces we have. Again, we're gonna to go to the tab spline tracks. And you can see, just like I told you, we actually have it organized by rail type. And you can see here, this is where it's pointing on the grid. And this is where it kind of gets annoying. It's because the actual rotation of it, it's at random placement. It's not in an orderly fashion. So even though we have it grouped together, we still have to do a little bit of guessing and breaking down just to make sure I'm actually correct. So this is kind of interesting. These two things are actually telling us that is tangent. So I know based on this value, this is our rail one. So this is actually our flat ground It's facing zero. The next one facing zero is the start of the curve. So I actually want to click on this value and I want to create a roll of 0 0.25. Now, what is the difference between negative and positive intervals? If you're turning to the right, you want to make sure this number is a positive number. If you're turning to the left, you want to make sure this is a negative number. We're going to be turning to the right, so we want it to be positive. Once we're done, we're going to hit the green arrow. You can see now this button's yellow. What this does is it will allow us to actually download the save in its modified state. From here, we need to do a little bit of breaking down. We want to find the next closest number. So we are at zero. This is 1.4, 2.8. So I actually want to go to 1.4 as this is the next closest number. And we are at 0 0.25. Now I'm going to go to 0 0.5. Download this. You might have to click it twice. And then we have to find the next highest number. So we are at 1.4. Now we go to 2.8. Now we go to 0 0.75. Double click again. And now it's all saved. You can see this is updating as we go. And this is what's going to happen as we go along. The next one, we had 2.4. I don't see a 3, so we go to 4.25. Now we should be at 1 even. Great. So I have 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, and 1. I'm actually going to save it now and go back into Roads Online to actually see what happens. Okay, once loaded up the save, you may think that nothing has changed, but if we go over here and crouch, you can start to see that the rail has started to lift a little bit. You can actually see the little notches happening. This is great and all, but we are not done. We still have to get up to 3 degrees. So let's go back into Road Studio and do it real quickly. Now that we're back in studio, the next thing we want to do is just simply continue the process. We ended at 1 degrees, now the next one is 1.2. So if I go here and go to 1.25, we have the next one saved. So we just need to do this for the rest of the curve. Let's power it out real quickly. And beautiful, we are done. The rail is going to be tilted to 3 degrees. 
this said, it's gonna be a little confusing if our rails are all the same, we just do it again. So I'm actually gonna change these all to rail height one. This way we can build again in 10 and then five, or we can just change them to let's say height 10 and then build in rail five and rail one. Either or, it should work the same. I'm gonna change it to rail one. It'd be this value right here. So let's just power out and get them all changed. Okay, simply changing them will not apply this, so we need to hit the green arrow on all of them. Once we do that, we are going to hit download. Once download, we need to put it in our save games folder and go back to where it's online. Once you're in the save, you might already notice that it's starting to look a little bit different. We have our zero degree flat track, and then the grade is starting to happen here. Or I should say the twist is starting to happen here. If you go to the end and actually look at it, you can see the actual tilt and how the texture is kind of bugging out. This shouldn't be an issue, this is just a visual thing and it'll be fine when the curve is complete. But now we actually have the curve elevated at three degrees. So let's say I didn't want three degrees only, well, I want a three and a half or four. Then again, you just need to build the segments necessary. If you have a tighter curve, you should try to build in shorter segments. Let's say two, you can do two meters at minimum for a curve, but that way you're trying to milk the amount of space you have and how fast you're gonna tilt. When it comes to the rest of the curve in our case, I'm just gonna build in bigger pieces now. I wanna keep it at three degrees so I can actually afford to make a bigger piece. I think a 50 meter will probably be good for right now. I totally forgot to do this, but I want to build it in height 10. So I'm going to grab three for rail three and make a 50 meter piece. I can go even further and do another one. Let's do another 50 meter piece. I'm actually going to scratch that and do a 40 meter piece. So these next two pieces are going to be at three degrees as well. So I'm not too worried. From here, I need to create the transition. And just like before, it, it's going to require to build in smaller pieces and just we're going to go down. It took 12 pieces of rail, I believe. So we're going to do that here. Okie doke, I just got the first half of that transition piece done, and just like before, we need to go to Rarid Studio. But, we loaded in a modified save, so we actually need to go ahead and resave this. Once you do so, now we need to go back in the Rarid Studio and do it again. As you can see, since we're in Studio, we have a nice big curve actually starting to form. If I go back to the spline tracks tab, now you'll notice that the rail we built previously got shifted and we actually have our new rails in place. This makes it super, super nice and super easy to kind of keep track of. And I really encourage you to do this. So the next curve we have was here at three, height 10. Next one as well at three, height 10. But wait, what's going on here? We went from 19 to 48. Well, we also did really big pieces and now we're facing more north. So how do I keep track of this if this value is so? Notice the trend, we've been going from smallest to biggest, so it doesn't change here. We need to go smallest to biggest. We're gonna go 71 all the way up to 80. But this time, we need to go back down. So instead of three, we actually need to put 2.75. It doesn't have to be a negative value because positive means we're rolling to the right and it still applies here. Next one, 2.5 and so on, so on. Let's see if we can do it for the rest of this. Just like before, I'm actually gonna change this back to rail one. The reason for that is just so I can make it really easy for me to keep track of what is happening. Once we modify the rails, we can just hit the green arrow and hit download. And just like that, our curve is almost complete. Again, I'm gonna use rail foot 10. I can probably just finish it now. We need to get out 100 meters for three meter long. So one, I believe that is the curve done. As soon as we edit these in Rarit Studio, our curve should be complete. We can go straight north. Let's go back there and finish it out officially. We last ended on 1.5, so now we need to go to 1.25, and so on, so on. And we are done. Turns out that last piece didn't need to be changed at all. So we can finally hit download for the last time. And we are done. The curve is finished, it's looking great. We have a 100 meter radius curve tilted at three degrees. And it just took a few minutes to actually do, but once you figure out a good process for it and it's just easy to replicate, you, you can do this pretty easily and consistently. From here, you can just build like normal. If you do wanna be mindful though, again, it's just the track height. So if I wanted to just keep it simple, maybe I'll build in track one as best I can, and then leave the curves for rail three and rail two so I can measure the height. You can also apply switches, bridges, groundwork, walls I mean, and do the same things. If I wanna do another curve, let's say I do a switch here instead, 
and I wanted to build another curve, but this time at a grade. Well, the same things apply, but this time the only value that's going to change in Roto Studio is the actual pitch value, the height of it and where it's looking. If I go back to 100, but do it, let's say, at, at 1 degrees up, I can just do the same things, but it's going to be tilted up this time. That's the only difference. In the end though, we are done. Super Elevation is back in Railroads Online. Before we end, there are a few more things I'd like to talk about first, one of which is I will be linking all the sources and reference material I use in the description below. I'll also be attaching the three saves and this demo save you're seeing footage from now all in one Google folder. You'll find it right at the top of the description for your convenience. Now if you made it this far, I really do appreciate it. It does mean a lot to me that you stuck around, and while you're here, maybe consider liking, subscribing, ringing the notification bell, and even leave me a comment and tell me what you think of the video. Alright y'all. Let's wrap it up here. My name is Kist, and Super Elevation is finally back in Railroads Online. Thanks for watching.